All right. In the last lesson, we were talking about the formation of the Roman legions and how it becomes the dominant, well, dominant military organization and just something that allows the Romans to do incredibly well for the next, well, hundreds of years. Uh, it does get reformed here and there, but it still keeps the same idea of just the the the, uh, the versatility, the mobility, and things like that of just armies on the battlefield while still keeping in good communication and cohesive. Um, a lot of it still comes down to the training of the soldiers as well uh, as well as their battle abilities, and most definitely comes down to the abilities and uh, able to kind of see the scope of the battlefield of generals. But holy cow, was it a, a very useful and uh, again just cutting edge type of military organization they had the legion system again like i said last time it, it lasts for millenniums uh just that just how impactful it was uh that combined with those kind of fundamental values that we talked about in an earlier lesson uh, um that did each uh roman male uh was kind of raised to be like yes you want to volunteer and fight for your country as well as just the massive population that they have uh, because of food and just it's a place where everybody can come into it you know a lot of people do come to rome for a new beginning you know that just all kind of adds up to being just this yes they have a good setup to become a very dominant civilization over time which of course they do now everything we've talked to talked about up to this point though uh, is really just when rome is in that little area where you kind of see they have like the pink area and the green area there right and remember last lesson i showed the maps and how they just get bigger and bigger and bigger well now we're going to get into how they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as the top of the, the slide here, it says Rome comes to dominate the Italian Peninsula through two sets of wars. Um, that's, I mean, it's more than two sets of wars, let's put it that way. Uh, but these two wars I'm going to bring up are two, two of the big ones that really just establishes Rome's dominance over the Italian Peninsula and all the other cultures there. Establish themselves as a major Mediterranean power. At this point, at least in uh, coming into the 300s uh, BC, they're not a major Mediterranean power, but definitely a, a very powerful city-state. So the first ones of these wars that we're talking about is the Samnite Wars. Now, there are two major Samnite Wars. Uh, there's more than that, really, but two major Samnite Wars that the Romans, Romans fight with the Samnites. And uh, one of the problems they like, I'm not going to go into all the stuff. Like This is actually kind of a fun set of wars to go into and read about and just the tenacity of both sides. Um, but one of the things that the Romans realized fairly quickly is that even though they have this awesome new legion system and it helped them incredibly well against the Etruscans and they were doing very well against their Etruscan, the, uh, against the Etruscans and conquering Etr Etruscan cities is that, um, uh, that was really good in just kind of open battlefields. Like they were really able to kind of utilize that in open battlefields and utilize mobility. But when they started going against the Samnites, Samnites were in kind of more the mountainous terrain of the, Ap uh, the Apennine Mountains. I think that's how you pronounce that. Kind of a mountain range in central Italy, Italy kind of goes up and down like this. So, uh, and the Samnites were kind of there as well as kind of south of that. And Italy, like basically up here and down here, basically, is where the Samnites were. And just not to kind of get into why they went, uh, came into each other, why they started a war with each other, but um, they, they have a bunch of wars, just kind of two major powers on Italy, just kind of going up against each other. And in the first Samnite War, Rome kind of gets its butt handed to them. Um, I mean, it's not that they don't do well in the battles, at least on their side, but they do not do well in kind of like the topography and the more mountainous regions that the Samnites kind of drew them into battle and they lose a bit. You know, luckily for the Romans, they always have more men to pull off of. And then they're able to skillfully use a bit of diplomacy, just kind of shove things off a little bit and make it seem like, well, we didn't really lose. We're just going to go into a peace for a little while. But during that peace time, they decide we need to adapt. And they adapt in two different ways. Uh, one, militarily. They're like, okay, we have this awesome legion system. Let's adapt it to mountainous fighting. You know, how do we basically adjust and let, what did the Samnites do against us that was really effective? Can we utilize that ourselves and then add in, add on to it? And then the other other idea was like, you know, we need to make sure to shore up um, uh, diplomacy with all of our neighbors, especially like the, the cities south of us, like Neapolis and Capua and things like that. I don't need to know those names, but anyways, we just need to make sure that, you know, we don't get surrounded really quickly in a way we can surround the Samnites with our allies instead. So for like 10 years, they work on that. 
where they basically through diplomacy and through re adapting this the new legion system to more mountainous style train of fighting or mountainous style of fighting uh, they have their next big war against the Samnites. And the Samnites, even though they were good, they and pretty definitely hardcore warriors, they didn't adapt. They didn't adapt to what the Romans were doing. Uh, um, what little adaptions they did just weren't enough. And the Romans are able to, I shouldn't say easily, but they run over them pretty good. And the Samnites, in a way, are kind of adopted into you know, the, the greater Rome, this kind of imperium that is starting. I can't really say the term imperium yet, but yeah. Uh, Rome is definitely expanding its influence beyond Latium. So, but that's the Samnite Wars. And with that, they don't just get the Samnites, but they take out the majority of the Etruscans as well. Uh, you know, this kind of is like an Italian war where just everybody in Central Italy is going at it with each other, and Rome comes out the victor. And so just everything you see there in central Italy now is the Roman state. They have control and dominance over that whole area. And they're also able to kind of pull those people into their armies. So, you know, actually the Samnites started adding into their armies and adding into their stings and paying taxes and stuff like that. And so do the Etruscans. Um, you know, not necessarily willingly, but over time, uh, the Romans, again, effectively used a diplomacy to say, you know what, it's better to be with us than against us. You know, we have a good system of government. We have a good system of life, and you are better off with us than you are with anybody else type thing if anybody else is going to be over you. And it doesn't work right off the bat, right off the bat, but over time it definitely does. So but then in comes what's called the Pyrrhic Wars. This is where it just, again, if you saw that picture come up, this whole area down here is mostly, well, very Greek. And when the Greeks are looking to the north and noticing how Rome is just dominating things, the Greeks view the Romans as just these backward hillbilly types. Uh, you know, it's like, but they're also getting scared. Like, these guys are definitely exerting dominance. We better do something about them before they do something to us. So the Greeks, uh, just long story short, the Greeks take... Uh, uh, take the offensive and they realize that going up against Rome alone probably won't work They kind of saw how the Romans did a very good job in the battlefield. Their armies are quite capable So they're like, okay, we need to have the best armies in the world come help us out So they ask for help from their Greek cousins to the east over in Greece and a city-state named Epirus led by a guy named King Pyrrhus answers the call and brings over his very professional army and he's actually viewed as one of the greatest generals of his time period uh, but he brings his army over to help out the Greeks of southern Italy. And they proceed to have a major war against the Romans. Now, not to go too far into this, but they basically have a major battle where King Pyrrhus wins. And the Romans get beat up really good. Like, they lose a lot of men. In the tens of thousands of men, they lose. But King Pyrrhus also lost a lot of men and some of his best warriors. And this, from that one battle, and I'm forgetting the name of the battle, I believe it starts with an A. Anyway, something you can look up. But from that battle, King Pyrrhus is quoted as saying, you know, if I ever have another victory like this, I'm finished. And from that point on, we've always had this term called a Pyrrhic victory, meaning that, yeah, you won, but you lost so much with that victory, you'll never be able to win again. Whereas the Romans were able to go back and say, wow, we lost this battle, those Greeks are pretty dang good. Uh, we need another army. Oh, yeah, we got one. Okay, let's take that army out. <laughs> And basically because the Romans just had that ability to always get another army, it wasn't about paying another army. It was about just, hey, we need more volunteers, and those volunteers come forward. Um, uh, they're able to basically outlast uh, uh, King Paris through basically attrition. Uh, there isn't really like a massive final battle between these two, but King Paris just, he can't hold up against the Romans. He isn't going to ever be able to beat them. He can just kind of hold ground against them. And over time, he's actually called back to Epirus. There's some things that happen back on the Greek mainland that he has to go back and deal with. And so effectively allowing the Romans to win this war, where, of course, they're like, okay, we're not going to allow the Greeks in southern Italy to basically do this again to us, so we're going to take them over. So the, basically that brings southern Italy into their sphere of influence. So now they have basically all of Italy, except for that northern part in the Po River Valley, under their control. Which, by the way, during this whole time, the Po River Valley... It was very Etruscan, but a lot a new group of people have been moving into that area called the Gauls, who will be talking about, again, the same Gauls that, that sacked uh, Rome in the first place. Well, they're starting to make a lot of camps up there in, in northern Italy, along the Po River Valley. So, but next up, we're not going to go into the up 
north, now we're moving more south into the expansion. Because now that Rome has all of Italy, this brings them into direct confrontation with uh, the mighty Carthaginian Empire. So, and at this point, I'm going to end this video because I feel like this should be a video on its own. Uh, and just leave this video as a short one based off of the Samnite Wars and the Pyrrhic Wars. And again, I'm just giving you the very basics. I highly recommend you going up and looking this stuff and looking this stuff up. They are fun stories to read about. They're, and, uh, well, fairly well documented, even though we think they come from biased sources, but fairly well documented. With that, I'll see you in the next video.